Hi everyone, now we're going to look at the agreements in a decentralized system. Now these have changed over time as well, even though, even when we've been in a decentralized system, but these are the current agreements that we have. Now that may change um, when we get a new government, but you don't need to worry about that. These are the three types of agreements that are written in your study design. So these are the ones you need to know. Um, so the move from a centralized approach to a decentralized approach, which we are in now, as we know, has seen the agreements change. And the three agreements that we current, that currently exist are awards, collective agreements, and individual agreements. We've already spoken a fair bit about awards um, in previous videos, but let's get into these three. So first of all, awards um, were the only type of agreement under a centralized system as we know. And even though enterprise bargaining exists, in a, de, um, in a decentralized approach that we have now, awards have never been abolished. They have changed, they've changed quite a bit, but they have never been abolished. So they do still exist and that's important to note. So what they are, they actually set the minimum standard for wages and employment conditions in a particular industry. So awards in a centralized system used to cover the entire industry, they still do that. But instead of being what an organization has to pay in that particular industry, they simply set the minimum standard. So an organization can't undercut that award. So that's a way of protecting employees to ensure that organizations are paying them and giving them the conditions that are in that particular award at a minimum. So they can go above and beyond that by all means, but they that is set at a minimum. In most cases, they've actually gone above and beyond that. So through the negotiation of enterprise bargaining, um, employees and their unions have been able to negotiate conditions above the award, um, but it's there as a safety net, just in case um, for the next agreement. Now, collective agreements, that's the next type of agreement. That's where, that's a contract on wages and working conditions, as all of these are, between an employer and a group of employees. So this is where a whole group of employees get together and they will negotiate. Often a union will represent the employees in negotiation. The reason for that is because they look at strength in numbers and unions um, have experience in negotiating wages and working conditions. So collective agreements, again, can't go below the award, uh, which is set for that entire industry. They normally last two or three years, and the actual agreement must include an expiry date in it for when that actually expires, and then there will be a period of negotiation for the next agreement. Okay. There's also things like what happens in for severance pay if you're made redundant. Um, there has to be a procedure for dispute resolution. It's a whole heap of things that must be in a collective agreement. Um, but both parties should negotiate in good faith. So what that means is that if it's you know it's time to negotiate, there's no point the employees or the union going to the employer and saying, all right, let's negotiate, and the employer just says no, and vice versa. The union can't just say, no, we're not going to negotiate. So they need to negotiate in good faith so that they're actually in um, a negotiation trying to get an outcome, not just saying, well, no, we're not going to budge. Both of us aren't going to budge because then an agreement won't actually happen. So that's one thing that's expected from Fair Work Australia is that both parties negotiate in good faith. Once it's been agreed upon, so however long that negotiation um, has taken, um, what happens is then whatever's been agreed upon is sent to Fair Work Australia and they go through it and they the, they give it the final approval. So they're the ones that check through to make sure it hasn't undercut any of the what's in the award, it doesn't break any of um, the 10 national standards for Australia, and, and then it's approved. Then we have an individual agreement. These, um, these are not AWAs, if you may have heard of AWAs. AWAs were in the past, which were individual contracts. You don't need to worry about them anymore. So individual agreements, it's essentially, it's just a common law contract. So any kind of, it just comes under contract law. Um, an individual agreement, again, cannot undercut the award. Um, and it can't, you can't negotiate higher wages and say, well, we'll pay you more money, um, but we're going to reduce some of your conditions, say some of your annual leave or something like that. The only time that can happen is if the guaranteed income is greater than 100000 it's the only time it can happen. Um, so they're often common among high salary earners 
and are enforced in the same way as a normal common law contract. So if it's breached, you know, it goes through the courts, etc. So just to recap, the types of agreements in a decentralized system are awards, which set the minimum standards, collective agreements, which is uh, the employer negotiation between the employer and a group of employees and an individual contract, which is simply a common law contract. If you would like even more resources to help you improve your understanding of today's topic, then always come over to teachingbubble.com.